Welcome back. As we approach the shoe battle, the first step that we're going to do is we're going to talk about the upper quality and the lining quality. Now, um, the uh, crew nonpareil uh, rumor here, um, this is made with a split suede. Um, it has two different colors, brown and uh, like a polo, and it has an orange lining which has a feel of like a chrome tanned leather. It's not as soft as most veg tanned leathers and it is extremely thick. So you can see the, you can see the lining at various points in the shoe pretty clearly, uh, even when you're wearing it um, from different angles. So um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a beautiful shoe and, and the upper quality is, is nice. The l lining leather is just a little bit less. Um, and that's that's my opinion. Um, so that's actually something I've spoken with the the owner of Crew Non Perel about upgrading that lining. Now the Meerman, the uh, the lining. This is um, the standard lining for a Meerman. This is not the uh, Depoy that they use on their um, hand welted shoes. Uh, that option wasn't available. I normally will upgrade to that, but the lining is soft, um, and it is veg tanned leather, uh, extremely soft. And this is a um, willow grain here I'm just gonna put that more in focus there this is a willow grain pattern um, and this is by uh, Ananoy uh, which is a very very well-known French tannery and um, is a very very nice um, very nice um, upper quality so uh, I would have to give the upper quality to Meerman on these now keep in mind the pricing difference between them this shoe ran um you know 240 dollars because i did pay 40 dollars extra for the jr soul um this shoe was actually 369 uh because i paid the upper the extra for this soul um not a jr but i did have the toe plate on there and, and they've got a fiddleback waist which of course the other does not and this is a pure custom shoe this was in one of the custom weekends, uh, but the only thing I was able to really change on it was the sole. So the time has come for some objective measurements here. So when we look at the, st the stitch density on the upper, this is one, two, three, four, five, four and a half, uh, four and a half stitches per centimeter. And then when I do on the same stitch, now this is a double stitch versus a single stitch, and they've got, you know, higher stitch density here, which is decorative, although um, here it's, it's really, really light. Um, but if I look in the same place, try to get the same stitch, and of course these stitches are aligned. It is one, two, three, four, five, but a full five. So this is, this is five stitches. Of course, more complicated stitch, more high quality stitch on this, um, you know, giving it that double row. Where here, it's just the one. Now, it's also suede, so it's a little bit, um, you know, lighter touch. But again, just trying to make sure you can see that stitch density compared to this one. You know, it is just a little bit more dense but that double stitching is a high mark of quality. Um, is design, but does also have a, uh, a legitimate value as well. Now at this point, we're gonna look at welt type and the welt type is a flat welt, right? So it's just a regular old flat welt and it is, um, it, do, it is a, a 270 welt uh, going right to the heel. Right, so you can see the stitches stop there at the top of the weld, and it's on the inside of the waist as well. When we look at the Meerman, it's the same thing. Flat weld, also 270, going all the way to the inside. So the welds are the same. And now we look at weld quality. Um, you know, as you look at this, the welt, of course, doesn't get carved down, but the sole does. Um, but it is very much in line, very tight. The Crenon Perel does a good job, you know, keeping it 
keeping it all together for that. When we look at the mirror men, of course, this is a, uh, it has a little bit of uh, car carving here, which is machine carved um, into the weld. So the weld has a little bit of pattern to it. It also has fudging on the top of it, which we'll talk about later. But if you look here, there's a little bit of line here on the weld itself where it is not perfectly sanded and attached on the edge. And the weld itself actually has a line there, uh, which is not that attractive. So again, just the weld, not the other piece. Um, and as I look at it more carefully uh, through my bifocal, which you'll have to pardon, um, that is a midsole. We're just gonna readjust the focus here. I actually need to move it out further to do it. There you go. That is the midsole, and there is a line on it, but it's not really a problem with the weld. It's more of a problem with the edge because it's the midsole, not the weld. So I'm gonna say the quality of the welds is, is still good. Uh, you know, because they're 270 welds and they're not 360 welds, one of the things that a lot of guys will do in videos is they'll show like right here on the inside where the welds join together, but because they're 270s, they don't. What you can do is you can look here where the welt stops and see how that's done. And that quality right there is actually pretty good because you can't really see the edge. Same here, it's just well done. So that's nice there. And again, looking at the same thing here, it's well done, no issues. We're gonna talk about insole now and the thing about insole is that there are, there are different types of insole. This has a sock liner on top of the leather insole. It is leather, uh, but it's not really a good fit inside the shoe, which is kind of difficult to see here. I'm trying to get the light angle here just right. Yeah, there you go. You can see it's kind of, there's, there's a rise on the, the, there's a rise on the edge there, so it kind of goes around and uh, just not really a good fit. And it has a heel pad in it, which personally I'm not a fan of any heel pads ever in shoes because I feel like they uh, they do nothing other than detract from the value and your ability to break in the heel and that insole. Um, here the Mirman, also a heel pad, has that stupid lip there, which I hate. Then the insole itself uh, is there and that insole of course is a perfect fit because it's just the insole um, and will break to your foot directly. So I prefer that. The actual quality of it is good. Uh, it says that it's genuine leather. On the inside it has that stamp. I can't get you to be able to see that from here, but um, it is uh, normal and uh, what you would see on just about any of these shoes. Um, I'll open it up and see. Maybe that stamp is visible in there. You can kind of see it there. And that's what I'm talking about. You can see on the inside of the lining, uh, it's, you know, pretty smooth, pretty well done here. Um, it's just a, uh, it's just a sock liner and it's not, uh, it's not very thick, um, nor is it something that's really going to help you break in the shoe. So, uh, definitely not a fan of the sock liner on the Crenon Perel and am a fan of the forward part from Mirman, but not a fan of this heel thing here. Uh, to me, that's kind of a waste. When we talk about sole, um, you know, the sole here is good. This is not a double oak bark tanned sole. You can see just from the way it's wearing. Um, obviously, it's painted. The paint is nice. The waist is uh, nice. They have that nice fiddleback on it. If they call that a fiddleback. It's a uh, beveled waist, and, and it is... Nice, but not uh, certainly not what you would see on a high-end shoe. Uh, the toe plate is nice, but uh, overall sole quality is good, but this is a basic leather sole. Um, and while it's upgraded for the waist, um, is, and it is carved down from two to a, to a single at, at the waist, um, still not, uh, not, not anything that I would say is gonna provide longer than average leather sole wear. And when you look at these, these are double oak bark tan soles from uh, uh, Jay Rendenbach. Um, 
Uh, it's painted, which is a little nice, but the quality of these and the midsole um, is definitely higher. I would expect this type of sole to last a year, maybe two years longer than this. I've actually gotten 15 years on a pair of these um, when I had them in a regular rotation. So, um, you know, I can't speak highly enough about uh, JR soles. They, they are the best uh, for a reason. Now, there is another brand that's out there that makes soles that are just as good, um, and that's called JF and J Baker. Um, and those are very, very difficult for shoemakers to work with, so they're very, very uncommon on the secondary market. Um, it's mostly, you know, your high-end brands like Edward Green and, uh, you know, Gaziano and Girling, and then, of course, your bespoke makers that are using the type of sole. So now it's time to talk about everybody's favorite subject, which is sole stitch density. And um, as we look at the crew, uh, crew non pareil, this is, uh, I will, there we are. You can see the stitch density here is exactly three. Actually, no, it's it's less than that. Let me angle the light here a little bit closer so you can see this and the guide. It's actually about two and a half. You see it, it starts and ends on the line. So if I move this below the line, it's actually two, two and a quarter, two and a half. I, I, would, I would almost say that you could call that two and a quarter. Um, is, so it's pretty light on the stitch density. When we look at the mirror men, in the same vein, you're one, one, two, three. I see all three stitches clearly in that line. Um, so that's three. This is more like two and a quarter. So now we're talking edge quality again. We'll look at the two of them. And I'm going to have to try to get this back in focus. Apologies there. And here we are. You know, I, I'm going to say that uh, the, the Crew non Perel has much uh, better sanding. Um, the sanding on the Miramin just doesn't look that good at all. Uh, it has the grooves that are done by the machine, but the, the welds, the weld the midsole and the outsole are not well sanded. Uh, they don't look like one piece and it just does not look well finished uh, to my eyes. So I'm gonna have to take uh, one from the uh, Mirman for that and give that one to crew. Uh, so again, the, the, it wasn't well finished um, from a quality perspective, but from a finish perspective, um, you know, I, I'm gonna still say that this is just a little on the uh, the rough and tumble side. Uh, just does not look well well executed um, at all. So, kind of a shame because the 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 soles are higher quality, but they just didn't get the care needed uh, to finish them well. Now, from a sole finishing perspective, you know. This is a JR sole. Mirman always paints them the exact same way. Um, and, you know, you've got the JR stamp. Uh, and it, I think they do a pretty nice job. They have this one thing here. And this is because this is not blind stitched. This is closed. If you look really carefully here. And I'll try to zoom in on it. Uh, let me see if I can get that. Let me back up, bring it closer, zoom in so you can really see this is important. Now you can see, see that line that's going right along the edge? That line is not paint, okay? So they've painted the outside of that edge. So there's this paint of the edge, but if you feel it, you can feel that there is actually an edge there and it goes all the way around. Okay, all the way back down to here. That is a closed channel sole. That means they cut the sole open just like they do on any other shoe and they hammered it shut. Okay. 
So that is that is a difference for Mirman. A lot of times with Mirman, you'll see that there's this like line on the inside like this, that they actually um, flip over a piece of it, and then um, and then wrap that around. On this pair, this is closed, meaning that they opened a channel, they sewed it, and then they hammer it shut. Now, why did why does that matter? This matters because when these shoes wear down below where that little flap would have been on a blind stitch these are going to stay closed because it's hammered shut now it won't be that way forever but it'll be that way longer and um, i think that that's a, a higher mark of quality than you see on a lot of mirrors so happy to see that now when you look at these um, this you can see there is no line on the edge here or here, even if I bring the, the light over and I look at it carefully, I don't see that line. Now, sometimes they, they go all the way to the edge and they look that way. But if I look at where the stitches are, the stitches are actually quite a far in there. So I can't see that. I can't see whether it was flat, flipped over, uh, but it is it's finished really, really well. And this part is super smooth. And of course, they took the time to paint and varnish it. And they, they did so with this beautiful waist as well. Here, they painted it. This paint will stay, of course. This will all get worn down, as you can see is already happening. Even the JR will disappear. Um, and uh, that's kind of how that's going to go. So um, I'm going to say that this sole finish is a little bit nicer. Even though I said before, those are a nicer sole. So we're gonna go to put it in focus. Sorry, back to the uh, thing. Sorry about that. I know how annoying that is. Didn't mean to do that. And now we're gonna talk about welt finish. Now that is the top of the welt. So now we're talking about up here. All right, so as we look there, let me try to get that in focus again. There we go. Now you can see this welt has no finishing on the top whatsoever. You just see the stitching. All right, see that? Now let's take a look at the Mirman. The Mirman has this beautiful line of very, very thin fudging that goes right up to the stitches. Doesn't go into the stitches, doesn't cover the stitches, doesn't bury the stitches, doesn't do any of that, but it does go right up to the stitches. Now this is much finer than the stitches as well. So again, purely decorative, but because they set the stitches back so well, that fudging looks better. It goes all the way to the edge of the 270 on both sides. It's even in the waist here, uh, even though that's really hard to do because there's very little space. They did a nice job on this shoe. So fudging on the uh, Mirman, uh, no welt finish on the crew. Now listen, these are both split toe shoes. They're both on the casual side. Um, so there's absolutely no reason why they need fudging, but Mirman took the time to do it, and that's why we're calling it out as a mark of higher quality. So there is no toe plate on the, um, on the Mirman, so it's hard to uh, do that, but if we look at this, this is a four screw, it's not six, doesn't have anything in the middle, it's not five. Uh, but this toe plate itself is completely flush with the sole. Um, and it, there's nothing for it. I mean, I can't even rub the tape against it, and it doesn't. I mean, you can feel it, but it doesn't. It doesn't snag. And these screws are completely flush. Now, what does that mean? That means that I won't hit the screws, right, when I'm walking on the floor, and it won't scratch my floor. So important when you're talking about toe plate execution that they're 100% smooth. Patina. Neither of these shoes have the patina. The patina on this is just the natural leather. I don't see anything different on there at all. Uh, I will polish it to one after I have um, more wear on it, but for now, I'm just letting it stay natural. And so now the last thing that we're going to talk about is price to value and the overall value of the shoes, right? At $360 versus $230, um, the price to value really is 
uh, more on the Meerman side. Uh, the Meerman has um, some, some better details, um, has a much more complicated apron. Uh, the toe uh, is not as clean, okay? That is an important part, the reverse toe. On this is, uh, I mean, it's texturally there, but visibly it's not as loose. Here it's, you know, pretty stretched. Um, you know, and they also didn't stretch the suede here. They did stretch the grain on the willow grain. So there's some of that as well. But overall, you know, this is, uh, it's a higher quality sole. Um, they did some of the details nice. Um, and so it is a little bit nicer. Mostly the lining is nicer. Now here, you know, they did the edging much nicer. Uh, they, they, it came with a toe plate, which is about a $50 value. So you take that $50 and you're talking about, you know, 300 versus 230. So it's not, not a, not a huge difference in price. Um, we didn't talk about the heel block. This looks like an artificial heel block. Um, does not look like a leather stack. Right. And that is a leather stack, but they're very, very thick. And it looks like a prefab leather stack, not a um, not not a hand one done by any means. So uh, another another piece to uh, consider. Now I've never taken them apart, so I could be wrong about this. But just judging from the thickness, it looks like it's two pieces. That's usually a dead giveaway uh, there. So um, uh, the lining on the uh, Miramin is better. Um, this one has a full lining, but it's it's that same leather. That's the um, thing, and it's not necessarily tightly installed. Um, or uh, or well cut in order to fit. Um, when you look at the the rest of the shoes, though, um, you know the, there are so many many good things about each of them that they are both great in the in the um, in the collection. You know, somebody took some time and really clicked the um, the leather around the heel on this one. There is no seam to it, which is not common on Meermans. So, you know, I want to I want to call out what they've done really well. Um, and now the if you're talking about like a high-end shoe, one of the things we'd be doing is looking to see, you know, how thick this is, because there's there's a pretty good lip on this. That's called skiving, where they actually make the leather thinner so that it seems like it's more cut together. Um, they did not skive this very well, um, and they did skive this a little bit uh, because the leather is the suede on the cap is thicker than this, um, but they it's not. It's not a huge difference. I mean, it is different though, right? You can kind of see the difference here, how much that at how much that lip is versus there, right? So, but um, overall, for thirty percent less money, uh, this is just a heck of a deal. And uh, at the end of the day, that's what that's what we have to go with. This is a shoe battle. Hope that it's been valuable to you. Uh, let me know your thoughts and whether or not you're surprised that Meerman, the lesser-priced shoe, won this particular battle.